It's been a long journey in a short time for Rwanda, from genocide to peace in 14 years. But dreadful memories at the church in Tarama, Hutus massacred 5,000 Tutsis in just three hours. This is the church at Tarama today. It's a memorial to the Rwandan genocide. Throughout the country, there are 200 memorials like this. Here, there are rows and rows of skulls killed in different ways. This one, a bullet hole. Most of the skulls here have been smashed with clubs. This one here still has the tip of a spear sticking out of it. The Tutsis didn't seek revenge, but reconciliation. Today, the basis of the killing, the difference between Tutsis and Hutus, has gone, says this former Tutsi soldier. Today, we are all Rwandan. There's nothing like saying you are a Hutu, you are a Tutsi. We have one ID, we speak the same language, and we want one people. Hundreds of thousands of Hutu killers were jailed in pink to humiliate them. But in a remarkable process of local justice, if killers apologize to their neighbors, their prison terms can be reduced. There are 12,000 of these courts. Once a week, about 1.2 million Rwandans out of about 7 million attend these kinds of courts, listening, judging, and maybe forgiving. Like these two men, both named Emmanuel, a killer and a victim. Emmanuel the killer, a murderer in the church at Tarama. I cut them. Yeah, I used as a machete. Where did you cut them? Uh, here and there. Yeah. And you killed them? Yes, I killed them. They are a woman and her daughter, this man's cousins. Emmanuel, the victim. He says he apologized and must accept and forgive. So now they're neighbors, even praying together. Over the road from the ruined church, with its memories and its message, never again. Marvin Fetcher, NBC News, Baseru, Rwanda. Larry Waters retired, they found their dream home in Africa. We didn't start out wanting to be pioneers. We just wanted a beautiful place on the ocean that we could afford. They sold their modest condo in Odenton, Maryland, and are building a 9,000 square feet mansion in Ghana, West Africa. This is the seating area where we're entering now. Part of the growing trend among African Americans, back to Africa. Stand and let us know who you are. 5,000 so African Americans now live on the continent. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many in Accra, Ghana, there's a monthly meeting. And whatever it is we do, we need to do it together. Where newcomers can get tips about settling in. We moved here six years ago. It's much more than just a comfortable retirement, though. Miriam Waters' ancestors left Africa <laughs> as slaves. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of Africans were kept in places like this as slaves to be sold in many countries, including America. The sun's shining now, but this is a dark place with dark memories for African Americans. Millions of victims of the slave trade. Is this a homecoming for you? This is truly a homecoming. It really is. And I am so glad to be here. I am so glad to be here. This is my home. So some African Americans are doing more than just retiring, but putting down roots by giving back. Enoch and Legretta Butler have helped African children for 14 years. Donations from America are putting all of these children through school. Come here. <laughs> How are you? Oh, fine. Oh, so glad to have yeah. you. Money goes to dig wells, provide clean water, buy books. The waters say when they get settled, they also want to find a way to help local Africans. We're here to help wherever we can. But first, they need to finish their dream home. Their oceanfront property costs less than $20,000. The house, about another $250,000. African Americans doing good and living cheap. Martin Fletcher, NBC News, Accra, Ghana.